Well, hello everybody. Welcome to PBM Vending. Now, if you watch our videos, you know that we talk about a lot of things. Most of it has to do with Monday. And not too many videos ago, uh, I told you what my game was going to be for the next year that we've already started. And that was going to be to make $1,000 in cash off of my credit cards without adding any new credit cards. And we're doing it and we're right on target. Everything's going well. But I thought about it and I thought, okay, that seems like a good goal, but that doesn't seem like I'm reaching far enough. It feels like the only decision I'm going to be making for the next 12 months is which card to use. And that didn't seem like that was going to do much for me. Now I understand that if we hit the goal, I will be hitting it three times faster than I would have before I learned about credit cards. But still, so I was watching uh, some videos and it reminded me of a story that when I started my job here, I had a buddy who has since passed away, and he asked me how much I was making, and I said, I'm starting at $7.50 an hour. And instead of going, wow, that really sucks, he said, all right, now you can live on that. And I was like, say what? And he was serious. And I I never did understand that. So then I was watching some videos and no no one in specific, but just a compilation. And it occurred to me I mean I knew this in my head, but I didn't believe it, I guess, in my heart. And this is true. It's not important how much money you make, it's how much money you save. It's also a truism that your expenses will grow to fit your income. So when those two truisms hit me recently, I thought, okay, so I, want to, I don't want to go too hard, too fast, so I think the first year I want to save 50% of my income. And I thought, thought about that, and, and I thought, well, okay, that would be great. So I sat down and I made a list of the places where I thought I could cut, and I slept on it for a day or two, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm already saving some of my money. As an example, I tithe every week. That's 10% of my income. And I pay child support every week. That's 20% of my income. So right there, that's 38% of my, or 30% of my income. And then I save for investments, which is uh, about 15 to 20%. I don't remember exactly. But those three things alone was near, oh here, I wrote it down, um, that comes to, are you ready for this, 58% of my net income goes to those three things. And I didn't even realize it. So then I thought, okay, so I went down my list and my child support, which is 20%, will be over in a year. So that's not really going to count, but in a year that 20% will be able to go into savings. And so then I started making a list of the places where I might be able to cut between now and then. And one of the and I think what I'm going to do is between now and the end of the year, I'm just going to brainstorm, I'm going to research, I'm going to see what's 
viable for me as an example and I pay my car insurance monthly and for that luxury I pay an extra three dollars a month that's thirty six dollars a year that's not a lot but it's thirty six dollars now here's another one and this, I'm doing this one right now and it's a little inconvenient but I'm working on it and that is turning my hot water heater off when I'm not using it it only takes about an hour to an hour and a half to heat the depending on the size of your water heater of course to heat the water back up why would and I'm single I got I, nobody else lives here so why would I pay to heat my water 24 hours a day when all I needed is a couple hours do my dishes take a shower I, I take my laundry out so I think if I can master that now how am I going to measure that because my utilities I have on a level payment plan so I can't change that one but I, I'm going to start watching and I'm going to see because it'll tell you the usage it won't change my payment for another year but it'll if it makes a difference by this time next year I'll get a huge credit uh, when they redo my rate so that one I'm going to work on now here's here's one um, and this is probably one of the main reasons why I'm not going to uh, start it for a while I, I mentioned in another video that I have been spending a lot of money on fast food lately um, not because I'm lazy not for any other reason other than I feel bad for our restaurants around here because I live in Illinois and the restaurants and bars are doing the the major lifting in our lockdown and the ones that are struggling to stay open I want to help uh, and, and it helps my business because in vending unfortunately I have a lot of my machines in bars and restaurants so I have a vested interest in them doing well so anyway in a couple of months um, hopefully I'll be able to back off of that one and save an inordinately a, a large amount of money um, now here's another one the phone charge now I haven't done the research in this but there is one out there uh, that the a lot of people are pushing where you can get uh, unlimited calling unlimited text and two gigs of uh, info for twenty dollars my current phone bill runs a hundred and twenty something a month and it's just me and my daughter on it and I think we do have two gigs of info so if I can get both of our you know hundred and twenty dollars down to forty dollars okay uh, that's eighty dollars a month that's eleven hundred and sixty dollars a year so if we can do that that'll be great um, what else was on our list now so I figure the the fast food one is probably going to be a thousand or so dollars I went through by the way and I did a four month look back through my checkbook on the things that I spend and I thought I was spending I thought I had a good handle on it I thought I was spending between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars a month on credit cards it turns out I'm spending somewhere around eighteen to nineteen hundred dollars a month uh, now part of that is the fast food that I was talking about but so I'm going to try to get a better handle on that and find out where that's coming from so by my guess including the 58 percent that we've already got I could probably cut another 30 percent 
So we would be at 88%. I mean, oh, and another useful piece of information. I do not pay rent where I live uh, simply because it's part of my job. Uh, so the only fixed cost I have are my car payment, my car insurance, uh, my phone bill, my computer bill, um, and some minor subscriptions that I'm going to eventually get rid of. Uh, car insurance, I think I can get a little bit less, um, and I'm going to uh, save the money and pay it annually instead of monthly. Uh, and we've talked about the other things. So I think there's going to be a two-tier part to this game. The first part we're going to stick to, we're right on target, we're doing great with the credit cards, and and it's good. Whether we hit her or not, I don't know, I have my doubts. But the second step, I think, is going to start in January or February, once I do enough research and get enough information uh, and get all my ducks in a row. And then, then I think we're going to have phase two step in, and that's going to be that's going to be some serious, uh, some serious. Let's learn to live, as as the phrase is, frugally. Um, I'm. I'm not really that frugal, but on the other hand, I I have no no need to spend money on anything really. Uh, so I think there will be a second step, and depending on how things evolve, there might even be a third step. But I wanted to come on and let you guys know that the game evolves, it continues, and I just right now I'm just doing research and trying to get and convey ideas. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below, and uh, uh, and we'll see. I'll keep you up to date on any new ideas that I have and any new things that happen. And if you have any, please share them with me. Well, you guys be blessed. Have a great week in vending, and happy vending!